Now let's talk about PIP. Now PIP stands for PIP installs packages and PIP fetches packages from a PYPI, which is the Python package index. So when you run a command like PIP install and then the package name, it fetches it by default from a PYPI, which is the Python package index, like I showed you in the first video of the series. Don't worry about that. I'm going to show you how to run those commands now today. Uh, so if I was to say it in a nutshell, in easy terms, pip is used to manage packages for Python, which means installing, uninstalling, searching, upgrading, and so on. All of that. Now, I'm talking about packages here. What is a package basically to begin with, right? So packages include one or more modules or, or libraries. What is a module in that case? Well, modules are Python code libraries that you can include in your project. Now, it may get a little confusing. Let me explain it to you with a simple example, all of this. Let's say you're working on a program for a project and let's call it script A. Now you know that script A is divided into two parts, uh, part one and part two. Part one deals with network scanning and part two is gonna deal with, let's say taking some action once part one is complete. Now you know that part one, it's gonna take you a thousand or 10,000 or a hundred lines of code, who knows, right? And let's say part two as well, it's gonna take you another hundred or 200 lines of code. Now. You know that somebody has already written part one, and let's name that script B. And you know already that script B, which is part one, already sits on the PYPI. And you can just simply running the pip install command, uh, you know, pull that script B into your computer and then use in your program using the import keyword right so ra you can go ahead and write these thousand lines of code as well it's completely your choice or just take two steps and be done with part one which would be pip install script b and then inside your um, program just run import script b and be done with that and go directly to step number two or the part number two of your script why would you want to do uh, the work that somebody has already done it's like, you know, doing uh, repetitive work when it's already there. Just call it using pip and be done with it. And yeah, that's how pip helps you a lot. I hope that was clear. Let's proceed. Now you get the idea, right? How pip helped me fetch that program, the script B from PYPI and, you know, move directly to the second part of my program and so on. So I'm going to show you how to do it from the CMD anyways. So if you have Python version 3.4 or later, pip is included by default. So I also showed you this before in the first, uh, you know, video in the series. But anyways, I'm going to show this to you as well. So when you run the pip hyphen hyphen version, you get to know that if pip is already there and what's the version in it. However, if pip is not already there, then you can go ahead and download pip from this website. I'm going to put this URL in the description. You can, you know, fetch it from there. All right, so let's check out the packages that are already installed using the pip list command. Hit enter. And now this command gives you the package names, all the packages with the versions as well that are already installed. Now, let's say if, for example, a request was not there, I see it's there, it's fine. I'm just gonna show you this example that I can go ahead and install any package this way. Pip install requests. Now it says it's already there, blah, blah, blah. Now that would be the command to go ahead and do it. I can say pip uninstall requests. That's it, to uninstall it. Now it says, hey, you wanna proceed with it, blah, 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 successfully uninstalled requests 2.31.0. Now, if I check the list again, I should not see requests there. It's not there, right? So I say pip install requests, I hit enter, and it says successfully installed requests 2.31.0. If I say pip list now, and voila, we see requests in there. So that's how you check, uh, check for the packages that are already there. You install, uninstall this way. Now you can search as well with pip. Let me clear the screen. Yep. Now, now, now you can actually go ahead and install a specific version of um, a package as well. Now we use this command, right? pip install requests, and that's it. 
Now, it, it, it fetches the latest one by default. However, let's say I want to go ahead and fetch a specific version. In that case, I can do something like this. Uh, two dot, let's say if there's a version like 2.29.0, I can hit enter. And it's going to download that specific version for me, as you can see right here, right? Now, if I go ahead and say pip list and hit enter, it's going to tell me that your request is on 2.29.0. Well, that is not something I want. So I can say pip install requests equals to equals to 2.31.0 and hit enter. And it's already there. It's just successfully installed requests. However, to always make sure that things are good, pip list, hit enter. And it tells you, okay, request is on 2.31.0. Well, yep. Now, let me clear the screen. And another command I want to talk about is the pip freeze command, which is used to save the modules that you're using in your virtual environment. For those of you who don't know about virtual environments, you can take a look at the first video in this series and the second video in which I showed you how to create it and how to activate and deactivate it and so on. So yeah, pip freeze is uh, used to save those modules in there. Now, before I talk further about pip freeze, I would like to talk about the requirements file. Um, uh, which is something like this. So let's say you download a piece of code and that code is actually dependent on a certain piece of packages. So that code is not going to work if those dependencies are not taken care of, right? So you need those extra pieces of packages for that code that you downloaded to work. And that requirements.txt file has, uh, you know, those dependencies those packages mentioned along with the versions of those packages so it, the requirements.txt file would look something like this if i hit enter now for pip freeze that file is going to look something like this right so it's always best practices among the best practices that you go ahead and include a requirements.txt file with your code so that the other guy knows hey these are the dependencies okay i need to run, um, include these depend install these dependencies as well for the code that i just installed for it to work properly right so the best way or a, a quick and easy way to make sure that you know um the package uh, the dependencies are actually um you know, copied to a file that you're going to, you know, include with your code. You can do something like this. You can do a pip a freeze and then do a requirements.txt. And uh, basically what this is going to do, it's going to automatically populate the requirements.txt file with these modules in this example. However, anyways, now the point is, uh, okay, anyways, let me just first check. If it is saved or not, I can do a find and then I can double click. Okay, requirements.txt and then hit enter. Yes, I'm able to find it. It's there. Okay, no problem. So, .txt. Okay, now that's what um, the requirements uh, file is used for. Now, what the other guy can do with your file is they can just go ahead and rather than installing those packages one by one, they can do a pip install and then do a hyphen R and do a requirements.txt and be done with it. That's it. It's going to install all those packages. So uh, it's, it's, it's a quick way of getting those things done as well. So yeah, that's, uh, I suppose, pretty much it for pip. I don't want to make it, you know, uh, longer than this and there are other commands with pip as well those are really irrelevant to this course there's pip cache uh, there's pip config debug and so on uh, for those of you who are interested to know more about those things those commands i'm going to put a link in the description you can go ahead and check those out and the most important thing is to make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to this channel like the video put in a comment share it with others that would help me uh, and this channel, obviously, with the YouTube algorithm. So have a great time ahead. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed the video and uh, this video was helpful. Goodbye.